Life of Frederick II to this day is considered scandalous and unorthodox. His unyielding temperament and lifetime struggle with papal power led to numerous brawls within the country, granting him the nickname of an Antichrist. Ironically, despite being excommunicated fourfold, skeptic King Frederick II met his death peacefully among the habits of Cistercian monks in 1250, what forever ended the line of the House of Hohenstaufen. The king's death threw the country into a stupor, universally called the Great Interregnum, the time when no king could achieve enough recognition to consolidate the country's holdings under one ruler, leaving Germany in a state of permanent civil war for almost 20 years. The tide of this 20-year-old dismay changed when the biggest beneficiary of Germany's disorder, Count Rudolf von Habsburg, used his wealth and connections with the Ebbets to make himself a firm candidate for the kingship. To seal his coronation, Rudolf promised the renunciation of the imperial rights to the Pope and promised a new crusade to Pope Gregory X, a former adversary of Frederick II. As a result, Rudolf I of Germany was crowned in Aachen Cathedral on the cold day of the 24th of October, 1273. Nine, nine, nine. However, another candidate for the throne, Ottokar II of Bohemia, never acknowledged Rudolf's election. When the new king decreed all lands lost after Frederick II's death to be returned to the crown, depriving Ottokar of vast parts of his land, it became the last straw. The good people of Germany were about to be thrown into yet another war. But whilst Ottokar II was preparing for the clash, the crown had to deal with a much more pressing matter. The first edict of the new king was to wage war against the robber barons, whose activities exploded in the wake of imperial authority during the Great Interregnum, and who committed numerous crimes against the crown, such as stealing ships or kidnapping. If Rudolf I wanted to stand against Ottokar II, he had to deal with the barons first. And we didn't even have to scare them. They were so afraid of our weapons. They are attacking us! Too far! It's an ambush! Protect the Kaiser! I will personally eradicate every last one of them. Schneller, into the woods. Watch out for traps. Riders. Yes. Yes. Right.
bothers me, Herr Commandant, how a noble knight can fall so low as to become a thug. Where is honesty, loyalty, honor? War makes men to us. It makes heroes. Times of peace are not for warriors. They get bored and make a sport of robbing the innocent travelers. Fall back! Somewhere around here. We must find it. My Kaiser! It must be here! Look! Right. It looks bigger than I suspected. I will need more forces to deal with them once for all. I have an idea. If I dress as one of the villagers, they will let me into the camp. I could sabotage their forces from the inside. You are as brave as you are smart, Thomas. Good. I will bring more men at dawn. Be ready by then. Retreat! Thomas! Hope that they open a gate when they see me. On the move. Open the gate, bitte. I need to get in. Uh, I see. Here is what I can do to cripple their defenses. Damage their weapons so they can't fight effectively. Poison their food so that they don't have a heart for fighting. Lock the well for good. Their camp will burn all right. But most importantly, nobody can see me do all this. Snella!
Right. Now they won't have enough weapons. On the move. Bowels rot, you bastards. Yeah. Right. Now they won't have enough weapons. Your bowels rot, you bastards. On the move. Can't even put out their fires. Moving. Moving there. Now is our chance to attack the camp. I see the gate is open. Time to end this. Remember, we do not spare lives today. Ready.
made it. The story of the so-called Baron Robbers ends here. Our Reich is a better place now.